Budapest, a city on a quest of climate change adaptation and mitigation. Budapest is the CBD of Hungary which is located alongside the Danube River in the Carpathian Basin. Currently about 20% of Hungarian population lives in Budapest and 40% of Hungarian GDP is generated in Budapest. Cities contribute more than two-thirds of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Currently, there is only 5 meters square of green area in Budapest, which in turn causes the urban heat island effect. How does this affect the climate of Budapest or Hungary? Well, a simple case in 2003 where Europe was hit with one of the 10 deadliest natural disasters, a heat wave where temperatures soared up to 20 to 30 percent above the seasonal average as the urban heat wave took its toll, killing tens of thousands. It greatly affected crops such as wheat and maize, which accounts 2.8 percent of the GDP in Hungary. More than 80% of the land is an agro-ecosystem, which means the agriculture sector is vulnerable to climate change. The transport sector is also responsible for emitting 30-40% to 40 in total of the city's greenhouse gases due to the 3 million daily travels with public transport of the total 5 million day-by-day -day travels, whilst bicycle users or those who travel on foot only make up 11%. The Danube River, which is one of the longest rivers in Europe, is essential in combating climate change. However, poor water quality because of poor pollution control, industrial inputs, agricultural runoff, have led to eutrophication, loss of fish species, and five of the six species are near extinction as well as the native sturgeon due to overfishing which badly impacts and hurts the ecology. Could it get worse? Well, according to Cruden's project, resulting in the forecast of Carpathian Basin between 2071 and 2100 states that summers will be hotter, summer precipitation will drop while winter precipitation will increase, moving the climate from a continental climate to a Mediterranean climate, and the whole of Europe faces an increase of 3 to 4 degrees Celsius average temperature. Is plan to lead Hungary out of this despair? With initiatives such as the Spatial Management Plan of Budapest to regulate land use patterns and maintaining the infrastructure of the city, the Sustainable Energy Plan as a framework to reduce the city's CO2 emissions by 20% by the year 2020, an environmental program of Budapest and many more initiatives. Hungary relies greatly on the energy being imported from neighboring states and one of the nuclear plants in Hungary PAP, which generates 42% of energy for Hungary and 80% of energy is also imported from Russia, causing a huge strain on Budapest. Experiments on using biomass, especially with rye and maize crop, geothermal, solar sources and nuclear plants as a source of energy seems to be the way forward to renewable energy to develop a more environmentally sustainable economy. Let's look at stabilization wedges created by Robert Cipollo and Stefan Pakala and how Budapest looks at achieving to cut down CO2 emissions. What are these stabilization wedges? Well, it is a framework of the Carbon Mitigation Initiative made to look at ways to cut down CO2 emissions to avoid gross amounts of climate change and through a game of wedges. Well, let's apply the applicable wedges to Budapest in the means of adaptation and mitigation. Transport efficiency as a wedge would be to concentrate on achieving fuel efficiency as the transport sector in Hungary accounted for 68% of total use in petroleum in 2009. This would be achieved through using hybrid and diesel engine and making car vehicles from strong yet light materials. Transport conservation as a transport sector, as mentioned before, causes the most emissions of CO2. This wedge aims at cutting the number of miles traveled by the world's cars by half by reducing the amount of private-owned cars using electronic means such as Skype to face-to-face -face meetings. Building efficiency in Budapest will help cut emissions by 25% in current and future residential or commercial buildings. Producing electricity with natural gas by fuel switching for electricity will result with emissions that are half of what coal emits. Nuclear, nuclear energy produces no CO2 and is already being used as the main means of energy in Hungary, but there is only one plant in Pax. Therefore, Budapest as the CBD needs to create more energy sources since it produces no CO2 and could create more jobs which helps increase Budapest's economical readiness, social readiness and governance readiness. Wind electricity is currently being used in Europe as Budapest is near the Carpathian Basin as well as the Danube River, wind builds should be sustainable. Biofuels made from plants such as maize and rye, which is currently the top production in the agriculture sector, 
for transportation and heating will not increase the concentration levels in the atmosphere. It would require one-sixth of the world's cropland, about the size of India, which could benefit as more green area in Budapest would help with cooling down Budapest from the urban heat island effect. Since Hungary is also looking into growing more green area, perhaps forest storage would be good. It would not only help the environment of Budapest, but also the economy, as well as create new jobs as mentioned before, investments that could be related in regards to the Going Green initiatives, and also increase the GDP in Hungary. In the end, if Hungary stays on this path, it will see the fruits of their labor. According to the ND Gain Country Index, Hungary as a whole has a low vulnerability score and a high readiness score. There will be challenges, but it seems though Hungary is able to adapt. Hungary is marked as the 47th least vulnerable country and 33rd most ready country. I wonder who is number one. Perhaps in the next few years, Hungary might be able to hold the number one spot. Hungary has also invested 2 billion forints to help combat climate change further, which is great news. Well, thank you very much for listening and I hope this was informative to you.